So as we live out the book 1984 and we try to figure out what's real and what's not, I read articles like this and I think to myself, how do I know what to believe and what not to? Okay, Pakistani national charged with the alleged plot to assassinate Donald Trump and other public officials. All right, so we have an assassination attempt on Donald Trump uh, or a uh, a person who was part of a plot to assassinate Donald Trump. It's not the one that actually happened, though, right? Not the one that actually happened. And we're going to get into the details of this story because it feels as though maybe they are in the process of setting up the next assassination attempt is where my brain goes, Right. Because if I know anything about the deep state, it's that they like to kill two birds with one stone. And that pun is intended. And in the case of the Donald Trump uh, potential future assassination attempt, um, what I'm talking about is knocking off their number one global adversary. I really think that that might not be an overstatement. And simultaneously giving them the justification to do the next big thing they want to do, which is start a war with Iran. I am challenged to talk about global issues when it comes to conflict because I genuinely do not really understand the landscape. Um, I feel as though we've all fallen into this, into this pattern whereby if the intelligence agencies say it, then we immediately assume it's a lie. And that the reason that they're saying it is because they want to use it as some kind of justification for some clandestine thing that we definitely do not want to either pay for or be the subjects of, you know, If they're like, yeah, we want to go to Iran so that we can tap your phones and then, uh, you know, round up people that disagree with our policies and put them in cages, you're all, yeah, not so much, you know, not that those two things connect, but it does seem like in many cases, the outcome of these operations seem to be, yeah, you get less rights. But the point that I'm making is there really are real things going on internationally that we need the intelligence agencies for, because if we don't know what is happening with our global enemies, then things are going to happen that we definitely do not want to happen. Okay. There are a lot of ways to get a, uh, a nuclear weapon, an atomic weapon, or a dirty bomb into our country. And if one of those things goes off, we are toast. I mean, who do you think is going to stop that from happening? The military? That's not how that works. The intelligence agencies are the ones that assess threats. Then you task the military with going and working operations. That's my biggest fear. And it has been forever. I mean, when I say forever, I mean since 2005. 2005, I read a book that absolutely terrified me. People who have been watching my channel for a long time already know this. It's called The Al-Qaeda Connection. Candidly, it's been almost 20 years since I read it. So it's possible that people would read it and go, Jesse on fire this is insane. Okay. Well, in, in 2005, didn't sound very insane to me at all. Four years after uh, 9-11 and it had to do with uh, Al-Qaeda trying to get their hands on these suitcase nukes that I've verified a hundred different ways are 100% real and are missing from the former Soviet Union. Their suitcase, they, they are literally a suitcase that people can travel with, except inside of it, it has an atomic bomb. Now, Uh, you know, is the fact that it's a suitcase very helpful anymore as a delivery system? Not necessarily given, you know, global, you know, travel and uh, security that people go through. I don't really know. But the the book was about this plot that in the guys, an FBI consultant um, knew about where Al Qaeda wanted to get about six or six, I can't remember, it was between six or eight suitcase nukes and then detonate them all in the same day in six or six to eight American cities. And it was like the most terrifying thing I've ever read in my entire life. And I, could, I, I obsessed over nuclear weapons for years after reading that. But, uh, you know, it's the feds it, domestically. It's CIA, you know, domestic uh, or Department of Homeland Security. These are the organizations that are going to, you know, be making sure that that stuff doesn't happen. So the idea that these guys have no positive impact on what we're doing is just not correct. And I don't really know how to discern which stories are real, which ones are fake, and which ones have what I would consider to be bad intentions. Like, I don't know, killing Donald Trump, if that's their end game, is a pretty bad intention, right? But the other story we're going to cover in this video is this one. Taylor Swift show in Vienna canceled after two arrested for planning an ISIS inspired terror plot. Okay. Like you think this is not real? You think this one's not real? What possible reason would they have to, to rig a, a couple ISIS guy, like ISIS inspired people to, to go kill a bunch of kids at a Taylor Swift concert in Vienna. That's in Austria. What well, what, what would be the purpose of that? So our, our people certainly are not behind that. You know what I mean? So I just, the, the whole thing is you never, you just don't know what's true. 
Now, here is something that's true. I work extremely hard on this channel, and the only thing I ask in return from people who are going to watch my content is just that you click the subscribe button. It takes one second, and it is incredibly helpful to the channel. And if you could like this video, that would be amazing too. You, the audience that watches these videos, is incredible with that. You guys, the like ratio on these videos that I do about this is out of this world compared to my other topics. I really appreciate it. And I also am very, very appreciative of the comments and I read a lot of them. It's sometimes too many. I'm not gonna pretend I read 5,000 comments on some of these, on these, but like I read a lot of them. So you have a fair, fairly high chance of me reading your comment if you comment on, uh, on videos periodically. And again, if you guys subscribe, that would be amazing. I appreciate you guys. Anyway, let's get right into this thing though. Let's listen to the, uh, let's listen to the smart people who, you know, the mainstream media tell us about this and we'll see what we think. I have not watched this yet, so I wanted to react to it um, real time. To an alleged plot to assassinate American political figures, the Justice Department has revealed that it arrested a Pakistani man said to have ties to Iran and charged him with trying to hire hit men to carry out the killings. Sources tell ABC News that Donald Trump was a potential target. The arrest took place a day before the attempt on Donald Trump's life. Aaron Katursky is here with more. Good morning, Aaron. And good what? What? The day before, everybody remember this little number from the 14th? So they're saying that they arrested a Pakistani man who represented Iran on the 12th, who was there to hire people to assassinate American politicians, Donald Trump at the top of the list. That was on the 12th. On the 13th, someone took a shot at Trump. And on the 14th, the FBI said that the gunman acted alone before they even got into his devices, before they had any any kind of investigation whatsoever. Is that the shadiest thing you've ever heard in your entire life? Oh, he acted alone? I mean, I already said that's insane that they said that without having investigated that right out of the gate is extremely suspicious. When do people tell you the conclusion of an investigation in 24 hours, especially a an investigation into something as serious as an attempted assassination on the number one leading presidential candidate in the United States? Oh, yeah, he acted alone. Do you think that might have been a critical piece of information? Oh, but, but, you know, there is this guy who was representing Iran, a foreign adversary who we arrested uh, 48 hours ago, who had been going around trying to hire an assassin to shoot and kill these guys. But yeah, he acted alone. Wow. Nothing shady about that, guys. Nothing at all. Shady. That just made this, which I think was one of the most shady parts of the entire shooting incident with Donald Trump 100 times more shady. So really quick, I want to tell you about Sheath Underwear. A friend of mine owns this company. He is a patriot. He is a stud. And Sheath Underwear has the absolute best pair of underwear on the internet that you can buy anywhere. Now, he's also a veteran, the owner of this company. And they are the official underwear of the UFC. Now, we all know where UFC and Dana White stand on our guy, right? If you want to support a Patriot-owned business, a uh, veteran-owned business, and an incredibly high-quality products line, then you can check out Sheath Underwear at sheathunderwear.com, and you can use my promo code JESSEONFIRE for a massive discount. You will be very happy with the product. I'll tell you what, dude, if you don't like it, you can email me and tell me that I, I put you on a bad product, and you can tell me I'm a bad person because I would never do that and you won't be disappointed. Give him a run. Good morning to you, Lindsay. Authorities say this alleged plot had no connection to the attempt on Donald Trump's life in Butler, Pennsylvania, but it sure underscores how the former president and other top U.S. officials are the targets of ongoing threats from Iran. Ah, there it is. There it is. Hey, there it is. Hey, and we knew, we knew that this had no connection to the shooting in Butler uh, on the 14th because we definitely had no way to know that because we didn't even get into Thomas Crooks' phone. The guy's got no social media, supposedly, okay? But he did announce on some, you know, website that he was going to do something on the 13th. It was this big coming out party, right? Like, we knew, he knew that. He knew he was going to do it. They figured out that he had, he had like, announced it but they knew for sure that he was a lone gunman. And how did they know that? They're like, oh, it's probably because they had nothing to do with it. It's like, all right, you know? Wait, so we arrested a guy uh, with a plot where we're currently interrogating him and then someone took a shot at Trump, uh, you know, the next day and we're like, nope, no way that has anything to do with it, you know, unless we know for sure it had nothing to do with it because we might have had something to do with the other one. That is absolutely wild. This morning, a Pakistani national is under arrest, charged with plotting to assassinate American politicians of both parties, including, sources told ABC News, former President Trump. Federal prosecutors in Brooklyn said a Asif merchant spent two weeks in Iran before he flew to the U.S., where he hired hitmen to carry out the killings. The defendant met with several individuals in New York who he thought were hitmen, 
but who were in fact undercover law enforcement officers. If this is true, good job, undercover law enforcement officers. You know, excellent work. In June, Merchant obtained $5,000 in cash that prosecutors said he intended to use as an advance payment to the hitmen. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. $5,000 as an advance payment to the hitmen to, to Merck Donald Trump? $5,000? That's, that's where you guys are operating at? If the, like, Let's just assume that this is true for a second. $5,000? That's really? You, oh, so, so Iran is behind this, huh? Let me just make sure that I understand. Let me just make sure that I understand your story here. Iran tasked this guy to go assassinate Donald Trump and they gave him $5,000 to give hitmen as an advance payment. Does that sound a little bit fishy to you guys at all? You know, $5,000, $5,000 advance payment. Does that sound a little bit fishy? The, the guy's supposedly a state actor you know, he came after, uh, you know, meeting with the uh, Ayatollah. You know, this came straight from the top in Iran. They gave him every resource that he wanted because this was their number one priority was to whack out American politicians. Really? So what kind of support did they give him? They're all a plane ticket, $5,000. They're all $5,000. Yep. That's what they were going to use as a down payment. You're like, and what quality of hitman is going to try to assassinate a former, or, you know, very likely new, about to be president of the United States for $5,000? Oh, well, not a very good one. You're like, right. You think the Ayatollah can't figure that out? I seem to recall us delivering like, I don't know, I can't remember the exact numbers. I'm like, uh, six, eight billion dollars to them, Right. Remember the cash on pallets during Obama and then like recently Joe Biden gave them multiple billions of dollars. We were saying that the attack in Israel was a result of funding that we gave to Iran. I have no idea if that's true or not, right? But all they could put their hands on for this top level operation is five grand. Okay, this seems super realistic to me. And they said he wanted men who could do the killing, approximately 25 people who could perform a protest as a distraction, and a woman to do reconnaissance. Merchant allegedly spoke about the murder for hire in code. Prosecutors said they found this list of words he invented to communicate and saw him gaming out the assassination plot on a napkin. Law enforcement sources told ABC News no target had been decided by the time Merchant was arrested as he prepared to fly out of the country July 12th. One day before a gunman took a shot at Trump during a rally in Pennsylvania. The Secret Service had made last minutes. Okay. So how do we know that Trump's on the list if he hadn't decided on a target? Who knows? Okay. But he's definitely with Iran, right? Definitely with Iran, right? So let's just say, you want to know what sounds a lot more likely here, assuming that this, that like the, the main point details of this story are true, is that some crazy person from Pakistan came over to do that maybe, maybe intelligence with Pakistan. But $5,000 is a pretty uh, heavy deal killer in terms of state actors being involved in this, in my opinion. They're operating on a napkin and and the first people he talks to are undercover agents. This guy's not really like some kind of genius operative. Security adjustments to Trump's July 13th rally to account for the threat from Iran, which has sought for years to avenge the death of a top general killed in an American strike. Iran, though, denied any involvement with the Pakistani man now in U.S. custody. But, Michael, the attorney general made clear he expects these kinds of threats to continue. I know, should they'll stay on top of that, Aaron. Yep, you should definitely 100 percent expect another attempt on Donald Trump. And when you do see it, if it is successful, we are going to have to avenge our, our, our conquering hero in the United States, Donald Trump, because we love Donald Trump, guys. We over here at the intelligence agencies and in the mainstream media, we love him. We are not going to stand for Iran killing one of our most popular people in the intelligence communities. We definitely are not going to let that slide. And uh, so we're going to have to go invade Iran. So, you know, this is definitely not what we wanted. Trump dead, Iran invaded. It's not what we wanted. It's not what we wanted. Again, I just want to say, I am not saying that uh, Iran are like good actors or whatever, or that maybe going and knocking them off is not the best thing that we could do. I have no, I just don't know. I'm not going to pretend like I know. I don't know. Okay. But again, 
when I see the mainstream media announcing the intelligence agencies trying to kill two birds with one stone, I get suspicious. Now let's talk about Taylor Swift. So moving over to other terrorist plots in uh, Vienna, which is in Austria, like we said, uh, they are trying to kill Taylor Swift also apparently. Uh, well, actually, we don't really know exactly what they're planning. We just know she had to cancel her, her tour date because there's an ISIS-inspired terror plot. So let's hear about that, uh, and then we'll discuss, because as much as I'm sure the U.S. government would hate to see Donald Trump go down, I'm pretty sure they really would hate to see Taylor Swift go down. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine if Iran got Taylor Swift? <laughs> it's like the whole world is all, no, no! If they would have got Trump, half the world's all, yes. Oh, no, how tragic. Yes, yes. But they get Taylor Swift, and they're like, why? Ridiculous. We begin tonight with breaking news. Authorities thwart an alleged terror plot targeting Taylor Swift's European tour, her Eras tour, which is the highest grossing concert in history. Authorities say two suspects have been arrested, accused of planning to attack one of her three shows in Vienna with tens of thousands of fans in attendance. The concert promoter says the shows were canceled after Austrian officials confirmed the plot. The suspects allegedly radicalized online, at least one of them a teenager who pledged allegiance to the Islamic State. U.S. intelligence alerted Austrians and European law enforcement about the plot. ABC's Maggie Ruley leads us off. Real quick, let me just... Let me just Tonight. Let me ask you guys something. So, obviously, this radicalizing young young guys online to pledge allegiance to ISIS and then go do this, that, or the other is a completely real thing. So, let me ask you this. Do you really honestly believe that uh, young Muslim boys are super different in their brains than, like, young, fill-in-the-blank, any other nationality and gender? Because they're not, Okay. They're definitely not. People are people. You are the result of your environment, okay? When we're talking, I'm talking about base model humans. And so if you really think about that for a second, and we're gonna come right back to the actual details of the Taylor Swift concert, and you think about the fact that you can take a regular kid with regular parents. Let's just use a, a, an extreme example. Like these, this happens to like people in America, like young Muslim guys who are like completely Americanized. Like they're not, it's not like they just got here from overseas. They live in America, they're Muslim, they get online and they start watching all this stuff and they get completely radicalized from things they watched through the box on their phone or on their computer to where they're ready to die while committing some kind of violent terror attack, okay? Do you really think that that does not apply to like tons of kids who suddenly are all, I don't think that I'm really a girl, you know? Or any of these other causes that TikTok uses to split the split the population down the middle or any kind of nefarious actor, okay? Young Muslim boy, no different than young Caucasian girl. It just depends on what kind of content they're going to align with to where you can kind of worm your way into their brain and start shaping the way they think about things and then ultimately drive behavior, Okay. If you really want to understand why people on the, you know, if you're like one of these people who's like a huge trans kid advocate, I mean, actually, you're not going to understand a bad example. Like if you're just someone who's like a run of the mill liberal and you listen to people on the right talking about the trans issue and they're like, why are they such assholes about this? It's like, this is why. Because from our viewpoint, these kids are not trans. These kids are equivalent to young Muslim boys getting radicalized to commit to ISIS. They are just in a different cult. They got radicalized into a different cult. And in this one, they're, I mean, you know, what they have in common in both cases is one of them is ready to go blow themselves up to exact revenge for this, that, or the other. And these ones are willing to mutilate their body and make it to where they are never going to procreate in some kind of global scheme to like run the population down and then turn them into a cash register for a pharmaceutical company. Okay. That's why. That's why. That's why when we say like, we have no problem with people being trans and they're like, oh, well, clearly you do. What's, what's your problem with gender, you know, gender or uh, hormone blockers? It's like, man, this is not that complicated. There you go. That's what it is. Taylor Swift scrapping all three nights of her Eras tour starting tomorrow in Vienna after Austrian police say they thwarted an ISIS inspired terror plot targeting her concerts. 
Swiss team saying in a statement, with confirmation from government officials of a planned terrorist attack at Ernst Hoppel Stadium, we have no choice but to cancel the three scheduled shows for everyone's safety. So Travis Kelsey says, I, I'm sorry, I can't help myself. <laughs> I mean, there's not, I mean, I can't help myself. So Travis Kelsey is an NFL player who's at NFL camp right now, right? They're all at camp. And, uh, and uh, Taylor Swift is, uh, you know, on tour. Now, Travis Kelsey is just about as, uh, you know, trustworthy as the least trustworthy dude you've ever put eyes on. And you're telling me he's just out here in the United States and he's like, I go home, I take a nap, I never talk to other girls because I'm so in love with Taylor Swift. That's my baby girl. I love her. Yeah, right. That dude is racking so much groupy booty, he can't even help himself. And I am going to tell you in advance, that is going to be how this story ends. Is going to be Travis Kelsey getting caught with another girl. Travis Kelsey is going to be the uh, the the catalyst for an amazing album from Taylor Swift of just shattered heartbreak. And she's going to rip him in all these songs. If he's not scared of her, he's out of his mind. Because this guy really loves the spotlight, dude. And uh, all that fame and positivity that she's thrown in your direction will turn into the exact opposite of that if she catches you with one of these girls. And, you know, I mean, it's it's going to have to be you chose a psycho girl. You know, like it's not like she's got eyeballs on you most likely. But these girls that'll throw it on you when they know that you're Taylor's girl, those are the kinds of girls that'll go online and be all, I have to tell people what I did. This has nothing to do with clout. But I have to confess. <laughs> Me and Travis Kelsey, we laid together in bed and he told me stories and he wrote me, he just read me poems and he brushed my hair and I just, I don't know, I just felt like I should just give myself to him and then after that we had lots and lots of dirty, dirty interactions. I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud that he chose me over Taylor. Even if for a short period of time, that's not why I'm talking about this. I just want to apologize to you, Taylor. I just want to apologize to you. I feel terrible. I feel awful about what we did. And, um, you know, definitely don't go follow my Instagram. And I've just started a brand new OnlyFans. And uh, I am doing that. And I'm going to donate all the money that I make to a charity for girls who are super famous who lose their men to little Lolitas. Anyway, um, that'll probably make for some good music, though, huh? Steve. The decision coming just hours after officials announced the arrest of two suspects they say made detailed plans for an attack after being radicalized online. One of the men, a 19-year-old, allegedly pledged allegiance to the Islamic State about a month ago. Authorities say the bomb squad removed chemicals from his home an hour south of Vienna that they are now testing for possible explosives. The popular Eras Tour drawing record crowds of young fans. Many Americans have been flying to Europe to see Taylor Swift. We hereby conduct. Oh. Tonight, fans with tickets to the Vienna show sharing their disappointment. Oh my God, that is soul crushing, dude. That is soul crushing for those girls, dude. Because if people love them some Taylor Swift, man. And they flew to Vienna to go to one of her shows. Do you guys understand? I mean, I, obviously, I don't expect all of you guys to have daughters that are 12 years old like I do. But, I mean, you know, Giselle loves Eminem, and, dude, I've been giving her a musical education that uh, everyone would be proud of. But, uh, you know, like, they, she was a Swifty for five minutes, and uh, if she had, actually, she wouldn't have cared that much. My kid's tough. But some of these other kids that she's friends with, they would have literally, th they would have been like, I wish that he did do the terror attack. Wait. You wish you went to the concert? Yeah, I wish that I died at the concert. That I would have died happy instead of sad like I am now. Boo. Anyway, um, well, the tickets are going to get refunded. Are they going to refund the uh, plane tickets and stuff? You know, it sucks. It's obviously not Taylor's fault. It's not anybody's fault. Taylor, I honestly, she says some really stupid things. And I, you know, obviously she's going to be doing all kinds, you know, a uh, Taylor for Kamala, Taylor for Kamala. She's annoying. It is, however, very ironic that it was a Taylor Swift concert that these young radicalized Muslim boys were going to blow up, considering that they were radicalized online in the exact format in which Taylor Swift was radicalized in the direction that they wanted her radicalized because the CIA wanted to use her as a mouthpiece to shape public opinion. 
That's the power of social media. They can get a young boy to be ready to go blow themselves up in furtherance of a community that they literally are not a part of, at least in the overseas portion. They're like a westernized young boy who happens to be Muslim. They get on the wrong websites. They get on the wrong social media platforms and, and accounts, and they start watching this stuff, and all of a sudden, they're ready to go bang. And then you have Taylor Swift, where you see her at the World Economic Forum as the top topic in one of these sessions. And they're like, we want to use Taylor Swift to shape public opinion. And you're like, wow, how are they going to do that without telling her? It's like, well, they know whose social media is whose, so they can just control her feed and they can radicalize her just like a boy gets radicalized into committing his life to ISIS when he lives in the suburbs. It's ironic if you really think about it that way. So we started with a new uh, Pakistani person who came over in furtherance of Iran to, uh, you know, assassinate politicians. And we ended with Taylor Swift with a guitar in her hand and me talking about the CIA. So that's what kind of channel this is. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would appreciate it if you would. I love you guys. Bye-bye.